After rapidly stacking Ship 24 and Booster 7 earlier this week, SpaceX has begun testing a fully stacked Starship rocket for the first time in three months, preparing for a full wet dress rehearsal and 33 engine static fire. Meanwhile, SpaceX is launching Falcon Heavy for the U.S. Space Force's mission today. All this and more in this episode of Alpha Tech. Elon Musk's SpaceX could start the countdown for its first orbital launch. On January 14th of 2023, SpaceX could conducted propellant load testing on Starship 24 and Super Heavy Booster 7 at the orbital launch mount. Standing around 120 meters tall, Starship is unequivocally the largest and most voluminous rocket ever built, which is a fancy way of saying it's really big. With its 33 Raptor version 2 engines, the fully assembled Ship 24 and Booster 7 stack would have likely weighed around 4 to 5,000 tons. Starship has a peak thrust of 75.9 meganewtons and can deliver more than a 100 tons to low Earth orbit, which would classify the rocket as a super heavy lift launch vehicle. For its recently fully integrated tests, though, SpaceX appears to have put Starship through a fairly limited cryogenic proof. The lack of frost on Ship 24 would make me hesitant to call it partial full stack wet dress rehearsal, but definitely a partial Booster 7 WDR if using methane and oxygen, plus some limited and ambiguous ship cryo loading. For Ship 24 and Booster 7's combined debut, Super Heavy was filled maybe 10 to 20 percent and Starship around 25 to 50 percent of the way with the with either liquid nitrogen or a combination of liquid nitrogen and liquid oxygen. It's difficult to tell but it's highly unlikely any methane was involved. Beyond the basic mechanical demonstration that Super Heavy Booster 7 is strong enough to support a partially loaded Starship which probably wasn't in doubt, it's likely that the main purpose of this first full stack cryo proof was to ensure that all the systems required to fuel Starship on top of Super Heavy were working as expected. That's no small feat given that Starship is both the tallest rocket and largest upper stage ever assembled. To fully fuel a Starship for an orbital launch, around 1,200 tons of propellant or liquid nitrogen for a cryoproof, which is equivalent to the weight of more than two entire Falcon 9 rockets, must be pumped around 85 meters up Starbase's integration tower. That requires thousands of feet of plumbing and a simple symphony of giant valves and pumps, all of which must work in concert without leaking, jamming, or freezing to fuel Starship. As such, the first full-stack cryoproofing was just as much or more of a test of the orbital launch site's launch-slash-integration tower and tank farm. However, that first test is just the start of a long process, and it's likely that SpaceX will attempt an increasingly ambitious series of tests that feature the full Starship stack over the next few days. As SpaceX said, via Twitter, team are stepping into a series of tests prior to Starship's first flight test in the weeks ahead, including full stack wet dress rehearsals and hold down firing of Booster 7's 33 Raptor engines. The first full stack WDR for the Duo 2 Force 7 will highly likely occur next week as we now have some 12 hour test windows on January 17th, 18th, and the 19th. But regarding a full 33 engine static fire with Booster 7, Starship could be de-stacked before that even happens. Musk also agrees with this, and if everything goes smoothly, both during testing and granting the launch license, Musk and his team could conduct the highly anticipated launch of their Mars-bound rocket. But there are always a lot of uncertainties with a new orbital launch of new equipment. So it's wise to enjoy the views of Starship in pristine condition while you still can. SpaceX stacked its huge Starship Starship vehicle earlier this week, placing the Ship 24 upper stage spacecraft atop the Booster 7 first stage by ways of chopstick arms at the company's Starbase site near the South Texas city of Brownsville. The dramatic footage was captured by drone, then released by SpaceX on Monday on Twitter. On Thursday, SpaceX continued to share some impressive new looks at the ship and rocket together. These shots, taken from much, much closer to the ground, show the stainless steel vehicle and its huge Mechazilla launch tower rising through low-lying clouds at Starbase, which sits right on the Gulf of Mexico. The SpaceX CEO himself also shared a closer photo featuring a Starship full stack and its gigantic launch tower. At the same time, he once again emphasized that Starship launch attempt soon. Before that, and specifically today, let's enjoy another spectacular launch from the Falcon Heavy monster. The biggest rocket in the SpaceX stable is ready for no earlier 
earlier than 2.55 p.m. Pacific, which is 5.55 p.m. Eastern from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The center core booster will be expended, meaning it will fall into the Atlantic Ocean. The two side boosters will come in for a landing on shore at Cape Canaveral. If Falcon Heavy does launch shortly after sunset, it could put on a spectacular show, lighting up the twilight skies for hundreds of miles up and down the East Coast. The fifth Falcon Heavy rolled out of SpaceX's Kennedy Space Center Pad 39A integration hangar on January 9th and went vertical early on January 10th. 12 hours later, it was loaded with around 1,500 tons or around 3.3 million pounds of liquid oxygen and kerosene propellant and ignited for about eight seconds. SpaceX uses static fire tests more liberally than most other launch providers to try to ensure that all systems, propulsion included, are cooperating before liftoff. At full throttle, Falcon Heavy Block 5's 27 Merlin 1D engines, which are nine per Falcon 9 derived booster, can produce 2,326 tons or 5.13 million pound force of thrust at sea level, making it the most powerful privately developed rocket in history. In terms of performance, Falcon Heavy is the fifth most capable rocket ever built and is second only to NASA's Space Launch System, or the SLS today. While the records of N1, Saturn V, and Inertia still stand, all three were retired decades ago. As is the norm for a rocket with as little experience as Falcon Heavy, SpaceX conducted the static fire test without the USS F-67 payload installed. Like USS F-44, a virtually identical Falcon Heavy launch with similar payloads that launched on November 1st of 2022, SpaceX needs to roll the USS F-67 rocket back to the hangar for fairing installation. During 44, SpaceX took approximately 110 hours to go from static fire to liftoff. Much like USS F-44, Falcon Heavy will sacrifice one of its three boosters, which is the center core, to launch USS F-67 directly to a circular geosynchronous orbit around 35,800 kilometers or around 22,250 miles above Earth's surface. A satellite operating at GSO will never stray from the same region of Earth, making it useful for communications and surveillance. Getting there, however, can be exceptionally difficult. The USS F-67 payload is mostly a mystery. Like 44, it will carry a Northrop Grumman LDPE, or Long Duration Propulsive EELV, with several unspecified rideshare payloads. LPDE is a transfer vehicle capable of deploying small satellites into customized orbits and hosting payloads for months in space. And that's about it for today's episode. Please don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section down below because everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and we hope to see you again next time.